Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today, um, I messed up. <laughs> I fell victim to blind buying. I don't know what happened. It all, it all happened so fast. I kind of blacked out. I don't really have an explanation, but now I have to deal with the consequences. You know, I thought maybe I was doing something good here, saving some money, not buying samples, and just going for the bottle straight away because it's affordable anyway. This did not go well for me. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm done. I am so done. For a while, I am like so turned off from blind buying for a hot minute. I'm good. I have a big fat perfume wish list of fragrances that I've already tried, but I got tempted. What can I say? I got tempted by that more affordable price tag. I caved. And here we are. So today's video is a perfume haul that consists entirely of blind buys. And they're all more affordable, which is great. Um, you know, sometimes you get what you pay for. And sometimes you don't, which we love. Okay, I'm hating a little bit because none of these were like 10 out of 10s for me, but a couple of them were good. So the first one I picked up is Elizabeth and James Nirvana Amethyst. And as you know, I'm obsessed with these bottles. I just, I love how they look like a cool flask. This scent is actually very good. I really like this perfume. And the reason I was so intrigued to pick it up is because obviously it's affordable. And two, because there's tobacco and cedar in this perfume, which are two of my favorite notes. The tobacco in here, and this might sound kind of contradictory, but it has a dry element to it, but it also smells a bit fresh and green, like a fresh tobacco leaf. Love the cedar note. It's giving me a vibe of freshly chopped wood. And then there's that light floral honeysuckle note just to sweeten it up a little bit. And there's no vanilla listed in here, but it definitely smells like there's a bit of vanilla in here, especially in the dry down. And it does share a DNA with Nirvana bourbon. You can definitely tell they're from the same line. So in the opening, it's more woody tobacco. And then as it dries down, it gets sweeter, more vanilla, more cozy. Also hours in, like literally three hours in, I'll pick up a bit of like a juicy red apple note. Again, it's not listed, but I'm, I'm picking up the vibe. So this is beautiful, but I need it to perform better. And you guys, I am so sick and tired of finding fragrances that I love the smell of and they perform like shit. It's very, <laughs> it's a very shitty experience for me. I don't appreciate it, it's rude uncalled for because when you are as picky as I am and you find a scent you love but it doesn't even perform it's like okay it's gonna be even more difficult for me now cool cool so yeah I have to absolutely drown myself in this and yes I mean absolutely shower in it do you see this do you see the wear I have the dent that I've put in this bottle, that's from one use, ladies and gentlemen. Gen gentlemen, one use. Can you see it? Oh my gosh, ew, I feel like such an OG <laughs> makeup YouTuber. Can you see? Can you see the product? This is not okay. Nirvana Bourbon, which I also own, lasts a lot better than this. I still have to overspray with that one, but it will last better than this. It will probably last me like six hours, but I will say that if you do drown yourself in this, spray everything, go mad, spray your clothes, then yes, it will last all day. Because there are some fragrances that I have, like Clean Reserves Suede Oud, 10 out of 10 scent. But I can spray myself like 50 times with that thing and it will last me three hours. So there's that at least, I guess. Really lovely perfume though. I think this is perfectly unisex um, and it is more of a simpler blend. It's not anything like crazy tobacco cedar kind of fragrance because 
some of those can get um, really heavy or complex. So since I really love the scent, I will absolutely be keeping it. I will be going through it. It's just not something I would repurchase. This next one is in collaboration with KKW and Jeff Lethem, and this is their second collection together. I believe this is now the 10th KKW fragrance I've tried, and there are a couple of nice ones in there for sure. Nothing has completely wowed me to the point of me wanting a bottle, but I had hopes for this, not high hopes, because again, I've tried a lot, but when I saw the notes, I was really intrigued and I'm like, okay, this might be really yummy. I was expecting a yummy caramel vanilla gourmand and I really like these bottles. They look very chic and just pretty. Like I love this vase look. Wow. <laughs> Saying that I am so completely underwhelmed is an understatement. This is so meh. I would rate this a two out of 10, not because it smells bad to me, but because it is so utterly boring. Firstly, the vanilla note that's used in this eerily reminds me of the type of vanilla that's in Billie Eilish's Eilish, which is a very synthetic candle-like vanilla. This is a musky, powdery, candle-like vanilla caramel with a synthetic, dusty cacao note. It also has a bit of a waxy vibe to it. This literally smells like a generic candle or random bar of soap that you pick up for two bucks. I cannot believe that this got approved to launch. I am so disappointed. It's honestly like really turned me off from purchasing any more KKW fragrances in the future. And if I do, like I'm going to need to hear rave reviews. I'm going to need to sample it. Like I'm, I'm really, I'm good. This next one is from Genre Parfums and this is called Eau de Vigny. And this is a dupe for Royal Crown's Sultan. And if you remember, this is from the same fragrance house that creates my favorite apple fragrance at the moment, Apple and Aces. This is a very good perfume. If you need an affordable alternative for Royal Crown's Sultan because <laughs> Because honey, I don't know about you, maybe you are living the good life, but I am not about to spend $650 on a bottle of fragrance. No ma'am, no sir. Ah, uh, hell no. <laughs> anyway, this is a very good perfume. I am just now starting to discover that I am not a fan of this type of thick, heavy whipping cream vanilla type of note in fragrances, which is crazy to me because I never ever thought in a million years that there would be a type of vanilla that wasn't for me. <laughs> this type of vanilla unfortunately just gets too cloying to me. Um, it's very sweet, thick, heavy, creamy. Unfortunately, it makes me a bit nauseous when I wear it, but objectively, this is a very beautiful scent. This fragrance is extremely similar to Initio's Absolute Aphrodisiac, which I have raved about in a previous video, and I still think it's a 10 out of 10 beautiful fragrance. However, the more and more that I am wearing these types of vanillas, I'm starting to figure out that even though I think they're beautiful, they're not wearable for me. So it's very similar to Absolute Aphrodisiac, but it is missing that dark kind of animalic vibe to it. I've heard so much hype about Royal Crown's Sultan, and I was really excited to find a dupe, a 30 milliliter bottle for $25. And I will say that this smells like a 100 150 to 250 dollar range kind of fragrance. So this is a thick, heavy whipping cream vanilla with a lot of dates, myrrh, and woody notes. And I will say, I think a lot of people would love this. It's just not for me personally. Um, also, it has amazing 
amazing performance. The next one is Swiss Arabian's Casablanca, and this is a very loved fragrance here on YouTube. And as many have said, this is a caramel apple, and I totally get that. However, what I would say more is that this is steamed apple juice with caramel drizzle and cinnamon dulce syrup. Starbucks has a drink called a caramel apple spice that smells quite similar to this. It has a lot of warmth to it. This is so appropriate for fall and winter. Like this is the smell of you and your friends, your loved ones, um, you know, either making homemade cider together, sitting around the fire, watching a movie, or you go out to get this hot apple cider and uh, you're having a shopping day. This is a juicy Granny Smith green apple with a lot of caramel. It's very sweet, very gourmand. So far, this is a big like for me. I can definitely see why this is so popular. I think I'm going to get the most use out of this from layering because it is very sweet and I do think you could overdo it with this one, although it is a very likable DNA and I think the people around you will appreciate that you are wearing this scent. And in terms of the grape note, I don't pick up a noticeable grape. So, you know, it's not grape like grape candies or grape juice, but I do pick up a very natural, fresh, crisp, crunchy grape. So although I can still smell it, the apple is definitely the centerpiece in this fragrance. And I do pick up a bit of amber and wood in the background, and I honestly don't pick up any of the other notes listed. Performance is really great with this one, like a couple sprays on my wrist and it was absolutely radiating off of me. So as of right now, like I said, this is a like for me, but I do suspect that it may become too sweet or gourmand for me, but maybe I'll absolutely fall in love with it. So we'll see. The next one is Zara's Vibrant Leather for her. And I have to say, I, I really appreciate Zara's effort in their bottles here. Like this is a hefty bottle of perfume. I don't know about you, but I actually get zero leather in this. This is mainly very fruity to me. And then I do get patchouli. Honestly, this smells like a white claw to me. It's fizzy, alcoholic, an artificial berry note is added. I'll also say that this scent is a lot younger than I expected it to be. With a name like Vibrant Leather for her, I was expecting something cool, edgy, unisex, leaning feminine. Um, but I could picture someone in high school wearing this. It's very simple, just very fruity and bubbly. I don't think it's worth it at all. It's kind of in the same vein as Eden's Juicy Apple, does not smell similar at all, but kind of like the effort and energy <laughs> that's um, coming across where you're just getting something very simple, young and girly. It legit smells like a white claw to me. <laughs> Anyways, that was another flop. And the last one is Max Creme de Nude. Um, this is, this is nice. I like it, it's good. This is definitely in the same family as Guerlain's Spiritus de Blavinia and Elizabeth and James Nirvana Bourbon, but before you come for me, okay, they are not dupes. I'm just saying they share the vibe. They all have their own spin to them, of course. But I gotta be honest, as soon as I smelled this, I got overwhelmed. <laughs> there are too many vanillas in my collection that are vibing, so they gotta go. And I will happily have 50 vanilla perfumes, but I need them to all be noticeably different. And again, because I feel like someone's gonna say it. Yes, I notice a difference. I notice a difference between this Spiritus Double Vini and Never and Never and Never Burn, okay? But they do have similarities. And I really don't like redundancy in my collection. And Spiritus Double Vini is queen, queen of this specific type of vanilla. Okay, moving on to the fragrance. I'm sure you guys are like, shut up, tell me what it smells like. Okay. Karen, this is mainly a vanilla fragrance. 
you guessed it, it's a fluffy caramelized vanilla. It has a fuzzy suede-like quality to it, a powdery, cozy musk. It's very likable, crowd-pleasing. Um, the day that I wore this, I got several compliments. People wanted to know what I was wearing. Super cozy, comforting, uh, great for bedtime, Netflix and chill kind of situation. It's a good perfume. I'm not in love with it, but I do think it's good. So that was my haul. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I'm running out of breath. I hope you have an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.